A lot of people it is. I mean, a lot of people that is their icebreaker is Brian Rose or somebody, one of the millions of people just like him who are just grifting a living from basically poor people who don't know any better, who are just looking for that idol of success. You know, one thing I've noticed is that people who are successful, they, they have people they like model themselves after, but it's never one person and it's always very intelligently. It's not like they, most people I talk to that, ha, you know, have some business going, they're not saying, oh my gosh, you know, Jeff Bezos is the only person I look up to and everything he says is correct. It's like they know, they're intelligent about it. they like, I like this guy for this. I take a little bit from here. Mm -hmm. They're inspired, but they're not like worshiping these people. Whereas in this self-help space, they're building these like people with all the answers. Oh, I've got all the answers. You just have to be exactly like me and you'll experience the exact same level of success. That's not how the business world works. You can't go be Elon Musk and start Tesla today. Tesla's already exist. You need to go do something else. And there are going to be different rules in that new space that you, you design. So I don't know. Um, I think it's really unfortunate that the incentives of this industry have actually created terrible business advice for people. It's supposed to be a world that teaches you business. It's like watching fake wrestling. It's like, this is not actually, you're doing it so much for the attention and the clicks. We're not actually getting real business advice anymore. We're getting like a parody of it. Yeah, it's like a weird little remora, like a, like a whole other organism that's kind of just evolved as like a parasite that just sucks off what's really going on, what people see. I mean, people like to use, there, there's, there's certain people that you think of like Jeff Bezos or people like Steve Jobs or even to, people like Tony Robbins. But if you look at most of them, by and large, like the billionaires of the world most of them, they don't chase money. They're not, people, they're not chasing those ones and zeros, those dollars. They're chasing bigger ideas or they're, they're working on building something bigger than themselves, like, like yeah. building, building a brand that's big. Like one of your video essays about Red Bull, Red Bull's not trying to just sell more. I'm sure there's people in Red Bull that are focused on numbers and sales and accounting and whatever, but the people that, make Red Bull what it is are the ones that are focused on telling a story. A hundred percent. And that's the success of their marketing is that, is that focus. The difference in focus is what makes them such a strong brand is that they're not constantly shoving Red Bull down your face. Instead, they sponsor some amazing BMX event and it just happens to have Red Bull on the side because Red Bull sponsors it. But it gets so many more clicks that way because now you're just watching advertising as content which is so interesting. Most people, they, they skip the ads. In Red Bull, it's mm. a Red Bull ad, but you actually watch it because it's entertainment in of itself. You have to stay in a certain lane as far as like, are you creating content and building a brand and trying to make valuable content and, and shit with some sort of integrity or are you trying to sell shit? And when you get too far on the side of I'm just trying to sell shit, the content that you're making is eventually going to suffer. Same thing with advertising, same thing with making commercials. And, but however, on the other side of things, what's to say, what's the difference between letting Google run 30 second commercials, sell 30 second commercials for some bullshit fucking, you know, guy selling a, an affiliate marketing scheme in front of yep. your video versus, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to sell my own affiliate marketing scheme at the beginning of my video or at the end of my video. As long as your content isn't about what you're selling. I mean, I think it's like the difference of like running a phone scam and using a phone. And sometimes you get called by these scammers. It's like, you're not, you have no participation in the actual scheme. You know, like for example, you, you take my channel. My ads are automated. I can't control if Coca-Cola or Dan Locke advertises on my, on my video. I just have no control over that. Uh, and to be honest, I am actively chopping off on the tree, on the limb that I'm sort of sitting on. It's like I make videos about fake gurus. I'm trying to end the end, not end it, but uh, clean up the industry to the point where you get laughed at if you make the same claims that these fake gurus are making now.
And so I have no problem if it, there comes to be a day where there's no fake guru ads. I'm actively working towards that. I want there to be, you know, honesty in marketing. I want the price of these courses to come way down. And I want them to start, stop targeting young people, young, desperate, uh, mostly men, to be honest. So I think that has everything to do with that is like, are you participating in the weird scheme or do you happen to live in a world where there are scams? Uh, I think there's a mountain of difference mm. between the two. And I do think, you know, there's this lionization of making money. People just think if you make money, you're automatically ethical or like not even ethical. Ethics don't even come to the, in the, into the equation, but you're doing good if you're making money. You're successful if you're making money. And I think it's just from our culture of like, we're constantly consuming, consuming, consuming money's kind of the scorecard. It's unfortunate that that's where we've gotten because ethics is left in the dust. It doesn't matter how honest your marketing is. What matters to these people is at the end of the day, how many people bought. And that's very sad to me because what they don't realize is that there are people at the end, other end of these transactions. It's not just a number. You're not just making a bunch of money. You're making the money from somewhere. You're selling it to some poor school teacher who's putting their last dime in going into debt because they think you're going to take them out of their situation and you're getting them more in debt. You're selling it to some Malaysian kid who thinks this is their opportunity to become something and you're getting them in debt. You're selling a Ponzi scheme to some kid in, uh, it wasn't Norway. I'm trying to give you a real example. I think it was the Balkans who has no money. Now they're in debt to this company, this, this like loan shark agency, which might end up breaking their legs. Like the, there are people on the other ends of these transactions. And when you lie to them and say it's easy to get rich, there is human cost to that. I agree with you. And I agree with you at, to the point where you're saying success. You know, there's a problem with how people define success, especially in the country, as far as making money. But isn't success defined? I mean, isn't how do you define success? Is it being happy? Well, isn't happy? Couldn't you define happy as having enough money in your bank account to where you don't have to worry about paying your bills? So I think- No, 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 no. I, I don't think you could ever reduce happiness to that. I also don't think, uh, I don't think money's not a part of the equation, but it's not the goal of the thing. Like it's, it's like saying, it, it'd be like saying this. It's like saying, hey, most people want to be happy and money helps you not be money helps you not be sad from money problems. Therefore, the goal of life is money. It's like, wait, wait, those things don't naturally follow. If you want happiness, it doesn't mean you chase money. It means that money helps you avoid some of the things that will make you unhappy. But if you just reduce the equation to money, you've lost the plot. And so what I'm saying is that um, by sort of making marketing and some of the, these businesses only about money, they've lost the plot of really the purpose of creating something. It's not just to make money. It's to have an exchange of, to use an overloaded word, value where both parties benefit from the transaction. That is the way to be successful is you make a bunch of people happy and you can make some money on the side. There's nothing wrong with making money. Right. But a lot of these exchanges are one-sided exchanges where one person is losing and the other person is winning. That's another thing is that when you create something or when you create a product, for example, that actually does provide that value, you no longer have to spend tons of money on marketing because your product sells itself. Word of mouth, people talk. If I see something I really fucking like or if I watch a documentary I really fucking enjoy, I'm going to tell all my friends about it. Yeah. And that way those people don't have to spend tons of money, you know, marketing their product or trying to push some false narrative about their product to a certain group of people. Absolutely. And even if they do spend money on advertising, I don't care. That's fine. Advertising is not inherently bad. Where it becomes bad is in these market segments where there is where rationality leaves the equation and you get what I always call predatory advertising, but maybe it's worth breaking down. Look, when you talk about health, it's the easiest way to see it here. The mm -hmm. health industry, you know, let's say I have cancer and let's say the doctor comes to me and says, Hey, it's inoperable, nothing to do about it. But then you come down, you're some slick salesman and you see an opportunity. You say, Hey, I can sell you this pill and it will cure your incurable cancer. What is that? What is the price of that pill to me? What can you sell that to me for? 
all your worth, everything you're worth, all, everything, uh, the last everything penny you have. That's called inelastic demand. It means there is no supply demand equation because based, mm. there is no price at which I will not buy it. I will just buy it forever. That is predi- where predatory advertising comes in because that's the reason you can charge $2,000 for information you could find on the internet is because they lie and they say the reason you're not successful is because I have this magical pill over here. How much are you willing to pay me for it? It's $2,000. And people will say, even though they've never spent $10 on a book, they'll say, hey, I'll buy that $2,000 course. Why are they buying it? They buy it because they believe it will make them rich and they'll pay any price because obviously any price is worth it. If you're going to make me rich and right now I'll give you my whole net worth to be rich, right? It just makes logical sense. So this is where these industries become really scummy and there needs to be a lot uh, more regulation around the advertising of these things. I wouldn't be ranting and raving like I do if people went in front of the camera and said, hey, this is a really, I mean, you don't, obviously you could glam it up a bit more than this. But if you're honest about the fact that most people fail, if you're honest about the fact that even when you do succeed, maybe you'll make six figures or something like that. And, uh, you know, this is really hard work. If you aren't known to be a hard worker, it probably isn't for you. You probably should go get a nine to five job where you have to be a lot less disciplined, a lot less, uh, you know, kind of clever and crafty. This just, this isn't right for you. If, if people said that and they qualified their prospects. They wouldn't sell shit. That, yeah. Well, that's the thing. They wouldn't sell it, but I'd have no, I'd have no problem with it. Cause it's like, yeah, you're actually being honest and they would have to lower their prices. Cause there's no way you can justify you know, along a bet, they, people want a sure thing. They've never spent $2,000 on something that's essentially unsure, but that's actually what the product is. And so in these industries where you get this scummy uh, price gouging, I think is what I'm concerned about. Again, mostly health and wealth. Sometimes it gets into happiness, sort of religious stuff. People, uh, you know, are. Yeah. Televan- what about fall, televan- they, televangelism they, they is the same thing. for right? a lot of this yeah. stuff. It's very unfortunate. It's very disgusting. Uh, you know, they, they prey on people's sort of trust and faith in common decency. 